Vault Dwellers, Wastelanders, it is time again for the Fallout Lorecast. Welcome back. We are into New Vegas uh, this month. We've started with that last week, and we are continuing with a look at Good Springs. We're kind of starting at the front. So if you've played a little bit of New Vegas, it's not too spoilery. I mean, this is the place to start out at. So nothing, nothing too crazy on the spoiler side, but we're going to dig into some of the things going on in Good Springs and some of the individuals that you will meet. And I am your host, Tom or Robots, as usual, with my co-host Lainey or Neos Pandora, who happens to be wearing cat ears on her headphones. How's it going, Lainey? As you do. As I should. <laughs> as you should. As Hello, all is yeah. right in the world. Ears on headphones. That would, you know, if everybody had ears on he headphones, we'd probably be a lot happier. Yeah. So, uh, welcome back, everybody. We are live again at 2 p.m. Eastern uh, on twitch.tv slash robots radio. And um, we'd love for you guys to come visit us. Welcome, chat. Thanks for being here. So, let's dive into Good Springs. I've, I've restarted a playthrough of New Vegas and had spent some time in Good Springs. Uh, we, we created a character on stream named Gorp. And he is uh, tr almost transparently white. He looks like paper white. He's about as, I mean, he looks kind of like a ghost. He kind of glows. Uh, bright red hair. Um, his face is shaped kind of like a fish. His eyes are really big. And he is, uh, he has a one, which is the lowest you can go in intelligence and charisma. So he's doing great. He's, uh, He's doing great, but um, he spent some time in Good Springs recently, and I, tr I tried streaming this last night and it kept crashing, so I'm going to have to install. I put it on my laptop, got that working with uh, some mods and stuff, so I'm going to put it back on my desktop and play some more of that in the future. But Lainey, let's talk about Good Springs. What's going on? Yeah. What's going on in Good Springs? What is going on in Good Springs? Well, well, quite a, quite a bit, but before we get into that, let's talk about what Good Springs is. What is good. a Good Spring? What is a Good Spring? So, Good Springs is, unsurprisingly, located near a spring. It's a shocker. Shocker. Uh, so this spring is full of does that, mineral deposits. Wait a minute, does that mean Good Neighbor is located near a neighbor? Well, they have neighbors in Good Neighbor. Okay. It's like kind of meta. Well, there you go. Yeah, I guess, I well, guess that is. There you have it. Sorry, sorry to jump on top of that. So uh, they, they have uh, they have minerals too. Yeah. So um, I mean, that's what springs are nice for. Is that I mean, obviously the water, but they can have a lot of mineral deposits, and so you can get things like lead or silver or copper or zinc or gold. This is all stuff that the spring near Good Springs was known for, and so before it was ever a town, it was a mining settlement um, for these minerals. Unsurprisingly, mm -hmm. uh, but the town's name comes from a rancher so separate of the mining completely uh this rancher he was john good and he used to take his cattle to the spring back in the day well, there you go that seems kind of on the nose doesn't it is good a yeah. real last name <laughs> is good a real last name i'm searching i'm asking the goog uh no it is an english surname okay all right yeah yeah there's a baseball player named andrew good okay art good is a radio disc jockey go on thank you the goog <laughs> so <laughs> so this town was established as a town in the early 1900s um and there was a schoolhouse and a saloon that were built shortly after in 1913 mm -hmm. and that's pretty much the essentials right you're a town you got a school you got a saloon what else do you really need what else what else Probably do you really need but that's what they had <laughs> <laughs> um after the great war though it became a ghost town which is Kind of fun, but also very sad. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, so for a while, it was just left abandoned. And some of the town still remains abandoned. Um, but it started getting, I don't know, settled back into re-inhabited, if you will, uh, when the New California Republic decided to start using the spring again. And also to begin mining in the area again, trying to utilize these things that have been left behind. Um, which is a, it's a good idea, and it turned it back into a town. So it had a new population, which is cool, but unfortunately, the population isn't really growing anymore. If anything, it's getting smaller <laughs> mm -hmm. because of a couple, a couple of things. Something I called a, a series of unfortunate events. Um, the like first the one being like the book series, multiple books. <laughs> so there are children um, involved. 
children not really not really <laughs> <laughs> um <laughs> so the first real issue is that uh the long 15 or i-15 right it's the interstate that leads into good springs mm-hmm. um and goes like through you can follow that interstate through like the whole game um so it got shut down and if nobody can go on the road then nobody will see the signs for good springs or nobody can see the signs for good springs so we mm-hmm. gonna go to good springs yeah right so and there's just a, there's off the very good reason for uh people not really traveling on that road anymore including oh escaped prisoners and death claws and things like that so right so and that brings me to my next point is that um even if the road was open <laughs> there's a yeah. few issues still for example the ncr correctional facility prison break uh you don't really want to get tangled up in that and then there's a death claw infestation like you mentioned that's been keeping people from getting in there um yeah. so, so real quick real quick yeah i uh in getting my copy of new vegas to work again uh, decided with my new level four character to head north to, uh, re, you know, relive some of those scary death claw moments from Death Springs. Uh, death Springs, I mean, Good Springs. Death Springs. We'll call it Death Springs now because of the death claw in- infestation. Um, so, one thing I didn't remember about this this game is I, I was wrong last episode. I said like 13 years old. It's 10 years old or 11 ish, almost, almost 11 years old. And the. The death claw infestation is kind of interesting from a a gameplay standpoint because if you zoom in from a distance, if you see like if you get close enough to one where it kind of uh, spawns in the distance, they look like they're not really moving around, and it's probably because of the uh, render distance in the game. Right, this is an older game; the render distance is limited. Um, but as you get a little bit closer, they seem to kind of move slowly, and sometimes they move in packs. But once you get within like potential detection distance, they're just like running around like I didn't I did not recall this. And I don't know if it's maybe a side effect of having a modern processor running a 10 year old game, because sometimes that changes uh, some like the frame rate. Like if you have a high frame rate in some of these games, it actually changes like the physics and break stuff. I don't know if it's tied to something like frame rate, but the the death claws are like hauling it and they're just kind of like. Just going back and forth across the countryside really, really quickly. And when they find you, they run up and you really fast. So crazy stuff. Um, I, I don't remember them being that fast, but maybe they were. I mean, they're definitely scary and hard to fight as a level four character. So, yeah, don't go up the long 15. <laughs> Be safe. I would not recommend it. <laughs> oh. And thank you, Mr. Presidente, for gifting uh, all those subs. Awesome. Thank you so much. So, <laughs> because of all these these awful things going on, the death claws and the prisoners, and you know the just lack of main road access, uh, they have a pretty hard time trading, which is unfortunate because most of the income in Good Springs comes from trading, it comes from selling things like weapons or gecko hides, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> right. Uh, and unfortunately, if there's nobody coming in, they can't make a profit. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So it's a little it's a little rough. Um and unfortunately it's not like traders really want to get there anyway. Most of them have started just totally bypassing it and just going to New Vegas or like other cities around. You know, they just ignore it entirely, which is not good. <laughs> yeah. Um Yeah. Yeah. But as for the people who live there with all these terrible things going on around them, they've actually been doing pretty okay. Uh they haven't suffered any direct death claw attacks, right? They just don't go near them, um, which is nice. Uh, but they do have problems with other creatures, such as the geckos, that just cannot get enough of the spring. They want to get that water supply. They want to get that good, good water. And it means that they're pretty much a constant nuisance <laughs> for good springs. Mm-hmm. Um, and not only do they try to attack the people, but a lot of people in good springs are farmers. And so, like the the general settlers farm and they farm a lot of brahmin but also big horners which are like mutated sheep they got the big horns <laughs> wait, wait, wait 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 that's why they're called big horners yes she's just looking at me like <laughs> come on <laughs> so so this is good springs i'm pretty sure that's like i mean that gives you a pretty good image of what it's 
yeah what the what the yeah. vibes are <laughs> so so um this is actually based on a real city uh the real city of good springs which was founded in the year 1900 exactly 1900 so exactly it is 1900. yeah it is 111 years old at this point uh by joseph good so all of that stuff is is accurate um this was part of the uh, it was built around a mining settlement, had to do with the expansion of the railroad into the West, yeah. um, all of that kind of stuff. Uh, it has today, actually, well, as of the um, 2000 census, which seems to be the most recent one I can I can find, it has a population of 232 people. So whereas Good Springs in the game, everything's kind of scaled down in these games, right? Has like j just a few people in it. The actual town of, is not that much bigger, <laughs> you know, 107 households, 63 families. Uh, the population density was 155.7 people per square mile. So pretty small. They all kind of live clustered in this one little area. Um, so, yeah. And what's also interesting about this is uh, Las Vegas, if you've been to um Nevada is in the southern part of Nevada. Good Springs is kind of up the northwest side of Nevada. It's not particularly close to uh, Las Vegas. So in the game, it's a lot closer because it I mean, it's like what a 10 minute walk from <laughs> from from downtown almost. I mean, maybe not 10 minutes, but like it's very, very close. So there is that. Um, but you know, in these games, they often take real locations and kind of squish them together about 10 miles off the main highway. Yeah, low elves in chat says, um, but it's, you know, in the real world, it's a bit further away. So just some fun, fun facts that uh, they're pulling some actual content here from you know, or they at least they're using real world stuff for some of the content in the games. So there you go. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So it's, I mean, they do that with a lot of the other games too. Of course, it makes sense that they would do that for New Vegas as well. Right. right. But it was a different. It, it was a different development team, which is yeah. which is what's also interesting. And you know, I guess it's true though because so the team behind New Vegas was a lot of them worked on Fallout One and Two, um, and in Fallout One and Two, you have some real locations, you know, like Los Angeles and these kinds of places. But what's cool is when they pull these smaller, lesser known locations into the games, um, these little details that you otherwise wouldn't necessarily be aware of. That's really cool, especially for people who live in the areas. And we've talked about this on pr other shows about like Fallout 76 in West Virginia and people like Dave Chaffins who live there and being able to like look out his window and be like, that's in the game. That's in the game. That's really cool. I can't wait. They need to that do a really Florida cool. one. They need to do a freaking Florida one because that would be amazing. Um, but anyway, Anyway, well, <laughs> tell you what, we're moving forward with the rest of the episode and talking about the individuals, all the different people in Good Springs and some of the details about them. So now is probably a good time to do the middle of the show stuff, and then we'll come back and do the rest of it in just a little bit. Hello there, old chap. Good to see another of General Atomic's finest still eager to serve. So this is the middle of the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to all of our patrons. You guys are a freaking amazing. I don't think I've ever said it like that before. A freaking amazing. True. Yeah, I'm mixing it up. Captured. Yeah, uh, I got it. I got it. I got to emote. Man. I got like, here's the thing, though. Like there's uh, when I'm on stage, when I'm in front of people like this, I often have to like do I have to kind of up my energy a little bit, you know, because I have to be entertaining. But generally, I'm pretty low key kind of guy. Um, and although I do appreciate things a lot, I tend to not want to like emote on others, like vomit my feelings. But I have to I have to kind of well it up, you know, I have to I have to I have to stir it up inside Maybe and I have to do the, the middle of the show. Get it out there. OK, so you you try <laughs> it. You try it. Yeah, you, you're much better at, emo at, at vomiting emotions on other people. So <laughs> let's try that <laughs> like wow our patrons did you know that they're like the coolest holy smokes you guys patrons these days smokes good 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 patrons i don't know that yours was better <laughs> i don't know i don't know any of the information you were gonna say so i couldn't say anything else <laughs> well it's just the, the part that says like how much we appreciate them because we really genuinely do like the, the patrons okay, are okay, part of what like they're, they're a huge time. part in us being able to do the show <laughs> uh -huh. hi welcome to the middle of the show 
Oh my god, did you hear about our patrons? Wow. Those guys. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. You guys tell us, which who do you want to introduce the middle of the show from now on? Me or Lainey? Which one? Which one do you like? Um, anyway, anyway, back to back to thanking your patrons. Um, every week we get to thank specifically our tier five and tier six patrons. And this week, Robob and Justin S are tier five patrons. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Pie Man is our Liberty Prime tier six patron. Liberty Pie, as we've been calling him on the Discord. If you happen to see him around in chat or on the Discord, and he's quoting some Liberty Prime quotes to you, he is fully in character. He is uh, living up the good life, being a gigantic murder robot for democracy. So um, thank you, thank you, thank you, Pie Man. We really, really do appreciate it. That is amazing. And everyone else, everybody else from our tier ones to our tier sixes, every little bit helps. And if you're interested in helping to support the show, then check out the Patreon, patreon.com slash fall lorecast. Even tier one people get ad free episodes a day early. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that you can get, including joining us at the end of the month. Um, and you know what? Another thing that I forgot to mention is if you want to help support the show, but you don't have money to spend on Patreon, another way that you can do that very easily because we stream the show every week is to use your sub for uh, Twitch, your Twitch Prime sub, you get a free one every month that you get to re-choose automatically. You have to you have to re-up it every month. But if you have Amazon Prime, then you have a Twitch Prime sub that you can use every month. And to jump into the stream, even if we're not here, and drop a sub using that is for free, and it helps support us and support the show. So we would love for that as well. Um, you can use it for me, my account. You can use it for Lainey's account, Neos Pandora. Either either way helps support us. So. That's another thing to consider. So thank you to our patrons. Thank you to our supporters on the live stream. Let's move on with the show. If you have any questions about Nuka World, I'd be delighted to answer them. All right. Back to Good Springs, Death Springs, as I like to call it. So <laughs> you mentioned Doc Mitchell. Doc, the, the guy that you, the first person you meet. Well, I mean, you do get to watch Benny shoot you in the head. Uh, but after that, <laughs> the first person, once you actually become, you know, like in control of your character, which again is so weird, this idea that like your character existed before you were inhabiting it and or them. And then all of a sudden now you're in control. Seems a little weird. It seems like you've been like stepped into somebody else's body. Like I know. But you, when, have you really thought about that? Like this idea that like you have now take you've wrested control of this person and are now like inhabiting them. It wasn't they didn't, weren't born that way right it would be uh strange given you know if they were a real human being and we were like possessing them i know but it's but they're but <laughs> uh well they're not real dad yeah i know okay so tell us about tell us about the good old doc so the good old doc we talked about him a bit last episode but let's get some some good details on who he is really on his own, not in relation to the main character. Um, so, Doc Mitchell was originally a vault dweller. He was born in Vault 21. Um, and I guess he's got moles on his butt because he was teased by kids uh, and they nicknamed him Mole Butt. I love this. I, lo <laughs> I love, I love this. I love that this is a detail. <laughs> I love this. Doc Mitchell. Doc Molebutt Mitchell. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Doc Molebutt Thank you for saving our lives, for rooting around in our brains in order to pull out the pieces of a bullet or two. Uh, uh, Molebutt. That's Mole butt. We're just going to call you Molebutt from now on. <laughs> out of so respect. He left, <laughs> he left the vault because uh, everyone in that vault was evicted by Mr. House after Mr. House won some kind of competition with them. I can't remember. It was like... They played like a game or something and they basically were like if i win you guys are getting out of here <laughs> and then of course he won so they got out of there mm -hmm. um and doc mitchell because he is a doctor became like a traveling doctor which is fun um but he ended up reconnecting with his childhood sweetheart from the vault and they got married and they settled down in new vegas um but of course they wanted to adventure a little more they wanted to Take the world, uh, da -ba -da -ba -da -ba. and so they went to 
California or attempted to. And they made it to Good Springs, where she promptly died uh, because her immune system was very weak because they grew up in a vault. Which makes sense to me. Yeah. I actually, I'm actually surprised that's not a bigger issue for vault dwellers. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. That's. Yeah. That, um, yeah. I don't know yeah. what to say about that, but like, no, that. It's, I mean, it's rough. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. He makes it to like Good Springs or like near Good Springs, right? And she passes and he doesn't really want to keep going without her. You know, they were going on this trip to California together. What does he do now? Um, so he decided that he was going to settle in Good Springs. He wanted to stay near where she was, you know, and mm-hmm. um, he was a doctor. So he very quickly became the town's doctor, you know, and that's just kind of where he stayed. Um, yeah. So I guess it worked out, but it, it's kind of sad that it, how he ended up there. Yeah, it's yeah. He I like how when you start the game, you don't realize that his backstory is so fleshed out because he doesn't tell you any of this in the first parts of the dialogue. No. And it, it would be probably too much at that time because you're building your character. You're more worried about like, who am I and what's where am I going and what's going on in this world? Um, he just got shot in the head. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You're not really worried about like, uh, who is this guy and what's his backstory yet? You know, but <laughs> they call you <laughs> Yeah, Yeah. Right. Right. No, I think that's really cool. Um, as with all of these characters, and this is one of the reasons why New Vegas is such a beloved part of the franchise, is that there's almost always more going on with the characters than you think. Um, the they re- I don't know how they do this in their design team, but they must have what what it looks like the digital equivalent of like one of those crazy like. You know, like the movies where like the crazy psychopath is like killing people. And so they have like the board with all like the the string from one thing to the next, you know, like all the pictures and the string (laughs) and the notes. Yeah. Like they've got to have the digital equivalent of that for each of these characters, because there's so many things that cross. And and I I don't know. I don't know what tool you build that out with, but that's that's amazing to me. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Yeah. All right. Yeah. For the most part, that's that's Doc Mitchell's deal. (laughs) Yep. All right. So who's next? Uh, so next on the list, I've got Chet. Chet runs the general Chet. store. Chet. Chet. Is um, Chet short for something? No, that's just a name. Chet. I had a friend named Chet in uh, yeah. middle school. Yeah. It's just Chet. Just Chet. <laughs> yeah, it's a very unique name. It's not It's not super yeah. common. Uh, anyway, so who's Chet? So yeah, so runs Chet the runs the general store. store. Right. He knows a lot about weapon, weapons. He can teach you about ammo, that sort of thing. Um, and he... It's very invested in the town. Um, I mean, rightfully so. It's a small town, right? If he runs a shop, he's a pretty big part of the town. <laughs> but he uh, he's a little selfish. He, he's a little self-centered. Um, definitely looking out for himself. But uh, I don't know that he's necessarily aware of that, that. That is his motivation. Because he wants to help the town, right? So he's looking out for the town's best interest. But is it the town's best interest? Or is it just his best interest? You don't know. But there there's... A lot of things that when you enter the town uh, that they're dealing with, mm-hmm. <laughs> and we'll get into that a little bit later, but also uh, I think in the next episode, we'll get into that a bit more. Um, but he, you know, a lot of it's like, how do we handle these things? And everyone has different opinions and he's very opinionated. Um, right. But at the end of the day, his reasoning for uh, what he believes is right for the town comes down to his belief that the people of Good Springs are survivors that are not looking for any more trouble, right? These people have made it this far. They've probably had some difficult pasts, right? Mm -hmm. And now they're just trying to settle down and be happy. Um, Settle settle down, everybody. Yeah, it's a a nice sentiment, you know? (laughs) Uh, Unfortunately, Good Springs isn't really in a good spot to not have any more troubles. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah well yeah, that's true all right so next up so, yeah next we got easy pete easy so, pete easy i pete. love that his name is easy pete yeah well he's a prospector he was he was a he used to be a prospector um and he considers himself to be a, a like a demolitions expert like an explosive which which expert. is funny to me okay so this is funny to me because the game very clearly s- explains that he's not a prospector in the sense of like you know 1800s america prospector (laughs) he's a prospector in the sense of somebody who goes around and finds like leftover loot and like items from the old world and acquires them and then either uses them or sells them or or whatever um but i I love that that name prospector because everything in this game is so built on this western aesthetic 
and that that mm-hmm. is carried forward in the game. But then why, I guess sometimes you find a place that you need to blow up in order to get into it. But really? Explosives expert? Like, it would make sense. Like, an actual prospector, somebody who's mines, like, old prospectors used explosives. They used dynamite right. to, you know, like, open the side of a mountain in, in order to create a mine. Like, But, like, how many things do you need explosives to get into at this point <laughs> in yeah. the history of the world? I don't know. It just seems a little funny. But I guess it makes sense. Maybe he found some, like, buildings that were, like, shut off or or uh collapsed and he needed to clear the rubble yeah, in order to get into the building yeah. that kind of thing yeah it's just a little it's a little funny but we'll go with it <laughs> so i mean you get yeah it's a pretty good backstory for him right he just goes around looking for things yeah and he, he, looks he looks super like old i love his face it's like all wrinkly oh, yeah it's so this good man has lived a full life <laughs> yeah yeah he's been out in the sun been... for a while yeah <laughs> he looks like the people um, that you around... meet in florida that like the the beach like the the 70 year old beach people that have like been yeah. beach people for most of their lives their skin is just red their like skin is red it's like this brownish red color yeah. but and super dry and wrinkled looking because they've just spent their lives on the beach it's kind of fun <laughs> you're like you spent your life on the beach you're like that's what brought you joy good for yeah. you yeah uh, yeah watch out for the cancer me, yeah. unfortunately me and anakin skywalker have similar uh thoughts about sand <laughs> <laughs> so. oh god okay <laughs> uh, i like water though <laughs> <laughs> oh <laughs> so easy pete he's partially deaf probably from the explosives probably from the explosives truly but yeah. he uh is apparently really good at reading people and so even if he can't totally hear you very well, he's really good at like reading body language and understanding people's motives and stuff like that, which is really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, this guy didn't always live in Good Springs. He has settled there now. He lost his old home thanks to Raiders, of course. Freaking Raiders. <laughs> Freaking Raiders. <laughs> um, yeah, so he went to Good Springs because it seemed pretty peaceful. And now he just farms Brahmin and Big Horners. All right. Nice. And he like hangs out in front of the saloon a lot, right? <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's the first place you meet him. Yeah. Yep. Or at least it yeah. should be the first place you meet him. I don't know if you. <laughs> I don't know what happens if you completely skip out on Good Springs and just don't you come can back walk there. Out of the town because when you yeah. hit like a certain, limit, it just initiates the rest of the game, basically, right? Right. It, like asks you if you want. To right. Pick you your can change any stuff. You can totally go do all the other quests and then even get in good with the powder gangers which have a lot to do with the good spring stuff you deal with at the beginning of the game and then come back so i wonder if all the characters are in different locations if you do that stuff first but i don't know yeah no idea yeah hmm. interesting. interesting interesting so a lot of the people in good springs have pretty uh strong opinions about the ncr mm-hmm. uh easy being one of them not really liking the the manifest destiny like energy they got going on you know like they really just want to take over more stuff yeah you know, like, keep expanding uh yeah they're not really a huge fan of that but they recognize or ecp at least recognizes the benefits that they do bring to the community you know keeping people safe um just you know they it, eh, it's some good some bad <laughs> he's not the biggest fan though yeah, and I think that's, uh, we've talked about the NCR before. It's one of those things where, it, you know, they're not just good or just bad. They're made up of human beings, and human beings are not right. just good and or just just bad. So there is a mix. He, Easy P even says at one point, he's talking about, like, um, something about how it's made up of a lot of decent people. But, right. you know, <clears throat> just right. because it's got people doesn't mean it's overall, like, a great thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, any organization uh, is only as good as the people in it right yeah so yeah so that's easy pete and then we got sunny smiles sunny smiles <laughs> so, okay so sunny smiles oh, yeah. go ahead with the description because i've got uh just go ahead go ahead and i'll chime okay. in oh, okay yeah i've got a pretty simple one for for sunny so mm-hmm. town guard right uh mostly keeping creatures away mostly geckos um she likes to to get their hides and sell them she'll either sell them to the general store or sell them to traders um and don't you have to go like one of the first things you do is like you can go on a little mission with her to like kill some geckos um and she also has a dog named cheyenne 
who is trained to attack on command, which basically I would assume that <laughs> any dog in Fallout is technically trained to attack on command. <laughs> <laughs> Potentially. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, one of the first things that she says like when encountering you is like she tells her dog to stand down, basically. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so anyway, she what were you gonna she say? she looks like a freaking badass. Like she's got she's got like the oh, yeah. cool leather armor. She's got the gun on her back. Um, she's got the attack dog, and then her name is Sunny Smiles. You know, like she's a cute guy, bro. She, yeah, <laughs> like it's it's just one of those things where oftentimes people end up uh, their names kind of influence their life path. You know, like if you like never name your child Candy unless you want them to grow up as a stripper. Like, that's just like, it's true, though. Like, if you like they've done studies on this, like people with certain types of names are more likely to have certain types of careers because of the way that they were perceived throughout life and the social implications of those names. Um, So Sunny Smiles seems like Smiles could be a real last name. Sunny, real first name. It seems like a nickname, but I think that might be her real name. But it seems like the kind of person that you wouldn't expect to be in this position, which is kind of this interesting juxtaposition. Yeah. And I keep breathing my drink when I take sips of my drink and it's not helping to take more sips of my drink. Good for you. So, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> okay, Maybe go on. Stop that. <laughs> <laughs> so next we got Trudy. Trudy, Trudy. So mm-hmm. Trudy is the owner of the Prospector Saloon. She's run the bar for seven years by the time that you meet her. Um, she's considered the town's mother. You know, they, she kind of looks after everybody. People, Respect her basically as an informal mayor. She kind of calls the shots around there, um, which is kind of cool. I like the idea that like she's not the oldest person there. She hasn't been there the longest, but she runs the saloon, and that gives her the authority. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. Well, it's the it's the social uh, center of the town. Yeah. 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 It's fun. Um, so yeah, I like I like her a lot. Uh, she's pretty easygoing, pretty nice but not weak and like you don't want to underestimate her because she will tell you what's up um she's very assertive she's not afraid to stand her ground there was an incident with some great cons where they were being a little rowdy in her saloon and she told them to leave you know really stood up to them Mm -hmm. and they got mad and accidentally broke her radio (laughs) (laughs) but she got them Mm -hmm. out of there and that was a pretty pretty bold thing for her to do you know so she can really uh stand her ground really uh Give a whackin if she needs to. <laughs> Give a whackin. <laughs> wow. On the head. Wow. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that's one of the things that you have to be good at if you are a bar owner is being able to oh, yeah. like manage the clientele. <laughs> and, like, Absolutely. Like kick people out if you need to and stand your ground. And it's always good to have that shotgun behind the counter, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you have to anticipate people being rowdy, right? Like you cannot own a bar and then just assume everyone will be on their best behavior all the time. No, because they're, they dr- <laughs> they drink alcohol at your. That's, I mean, alcohol. Yeah. Like that's the, your business is is getting people drunk. So yeah, they're gonna do right. dumb stuff. Yeah, yeah. Always got to be on your <laughs> yeah, toes. Yeah, if you get some like really terrible people in there, you're getting terrible people drunk in your business. Like yeah. you, you're gonna have to deal with that. Right. Elgato <laughs> Pub just popped in and said, "A bar owner always has to be on your toes." Thank you, Elgato Pub. I I believe that you. I'm going to believe what you say about this because I have a feeling you you know something about pubs and bars. I, I don't know how I know that, but um, yeah. So yeah. So, okay. So Trudy, don't mess with her. She runs the. And you get that kind of feeling. Like that's one of the other things that's cool about this game is the voice acting is really good, even though the graphics are dated. Um, and so much of what the character is is conveyed through the voice. Because the the graphics are, are so dated, like their facial expressions are very limited. Like the the way they look is, you know, they look like a video game character from ten years ago. But um, the voices really do convey uh, feelings. And when you meet somebody yeah. like Trudy, you get this sense of like, okay, you know your stuff. I'm not going to mess with you unless, of course, you're a psychopath and then you just kill everybody. But yeah, yep, absolutely, yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's true. All right. So who's next? I I, I I like this next one. I think this next one's interesting. Oh, we next, might not. We yeah. might have to do a whole episode just on this quote person. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we'll just dip our toes in a little bit. Uh, Victor, <laughs> it's the next one. He's a Robco Securitron. He's a friendly fella. He's cowboy themed. <laughs> um, and I mean. 
At least at this point in the game, he's cowboy. Yeah. Baby. At least, yeah. Um, so he says he's been in Good Springs since 2066, which means what, like 20 years almost? Um, I think I think I did that math right. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and he had an owner that he says used to live in Good Springs, uh, and he can point out where he used to live, but no longer is there. And Victor has just kind of been hanging out, but doesn't really help or interact with the other residents at all. Um, and so when Victor starts interacting with you, hmm. Hmm. it seems a little strange hmm. because why did Victor suddenly take an interest in this stranger that showed hmm. up in Good Springs? Right? It's a little, it's a little weird. Yeah. Um, Something's going on there. Yeah, you know, you know that he's uh he knows some things that he is either intentionally or unintentionally keeping back. Right. right? And if you haven't played the game, if you're somebody who's you know, hasn't dove into this. Dove? Dived? Words. Divin? Divin? <laughs> if you haven't divinated into this. Um, divinated. He's a Securitron. <laughs> and Securitrons, I don't believe, show up in any of the other uh, Bethesda releases. And I think it would be really cool if they did show up in 76, because I like their design. Uh, think of, like, a uh, mm, Protectron but instead of like a cone shaped top of the body it has a broad like broad shouldered shape of the body with a big tv on the where the face is and so they can show anything on the face that they want and what victor decides to use is a very friendly cartoon looking cowboy <laughs> which yeah. which gives you the sense that like this is overly cute and friendly there's something about this that's a little bit too <laughs> friendly this Something else that. is going on here. And of course that, you know, plays out. Yeah, it's like a TV with arms and legs. Uh Ren in chat says. Yeah. A very tanky TV. Very with tanky arms and legs. TV with like arms and legs. A Jetsons looking kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Low elves. Yes. Um <laughs> Nekomata says, yeah, he's a creeper. <laughs> I would love to have <laughs> I would love to have this design show up in 76. I I mean it would make sense. It's a Robco uh robot. Robco exists on both coasts i think uh this i hope these show up at some point you know or they get like mm. they find like a shipment of them and then all of a sudden they're a thing um yeah they're cool robots they're cool robots so they, i believe they have a wheel on the bottom too right yeah oh. they just roll around yeah they don't walk they just have like a big wheel um yeah. securitron look at pictures again um Sounds go ahead right <laughs> oh securitron is an actual real world thing also Anyway, what? huh? <laughs> what is it in the real world? It's like a business thing. I don't know. Oh, it, it's gotcha. a, they make uh, electric doors or something, magnetic locks. Not um, nearly as exciting. Not nearly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> big wheel, a big single wheel on the bottom, and then like these like uh, tubular looking arms. You know, like uh, like those. Tubular. <laughs> yeah, like those nineteen sixties uh, robots from like those uh, space movies where they have like what just looks like a tube for an arm with like the ripples on it i don't know the best way to describe that <laughs> like a uh, yeah <laughs> yeah what's the word for that i don't even know what the word like for that is kind of like tube. yeah what, what kind of tube is that <laughs> a vent tube i i don't know i don't know what that is yeah um yeah anyway enough with the description That's Victor. yep yep <laughs> yep and so um, we'll have to dig into him like what we're, we're gonna we've talked about mr house on the show with with ken we did a really long episode about that um specifically securetrons and victor and victor's some of the things that can play out with victor will be really cool to cover in some future episodes so who else do we have we got two more two more personalities two more. these ones kind of go together um and they together i think introduce the powder gangers so i don't have a bit for that because we're going to talk about them in, in a future episodes future episode um, just stick around <laughs> <laughs> but first we've got Ringo. Ringo is a traitor. He and a beetle. Kind of got in a beetle. <laughs> he kind of got roped into Good Springs on accident. He was traveling um I think on the I15 on the on the long 15. Um, probably. Which is stupid. He should not have been doing that. <laughs> <laughs> you are a fool. <laughs> Um, so he was right. He has his crimson caravan. Is mm -hmm. that's the name of the caravan? Yeah, so which is located to the north, past all the death claws. Yes. So there's so that. he he passed through death claw territory, mm -hmm. and then passed through 
prison escape territory <laughs> mm-hmm. and came across some angry dudes. Um, and basically what happened is he was going going his happy way, trying to trade some things and essentially got mugged <laughs> um, and then fought back and they didn't like that. So now he's hiding in Good Springs. <laughs> they didn't like it. They didn't like Stop it. Stop fighting it. back at us. How dare you? We're going to take your stuff. Yourself. How dare you get violent? <laughs> so yeah so <laughs> that's how powder kangers talk <laughs> i'm yeah. surprised at you sir <laughs> um <laughs> so yeah so ringo escaped uh his caravan did not <laughs> but he escaped and he's now hiding in the abandoned gas station mm-hmm. in good springs mm-hmm. and um so fun. Get, the powder gang is looking for him. Fun little, fun little note. If you travel north on the fifteen, um, you can come across a dead caravan Brahmin with uh, some gear on it. Some uh, like you can see all the packages and stuff. Um, at least this is something I noticed on my recent play playthrough. I don't know if that was just something that happened and like at first when i thought about it when i went past it i was like oh maybe there was a traveler that went went by and like a death clock killed it or a powder ganger or somebody Mm -hmm. um but i think that might be tied to ringo yeah that might be ringo's pack it might be it might be Mm -hmm. that's fun yeah i haven't double checked that i bet i bet somebody like oxhorn has a video about like ringo ringo was traveling on the 15. oh probably he died (laughs) well he didn't die but his caravan died and the remnants of his caravan are right here. Yeah. Is it Cass's? I don't know. I don't know whose it is. Like it, there's no like note on it or something that says, um, but yeah, it, interesting. Like that was put there for a reason. Probably. Yeah. Uh, so, I didn't see any, um, well, I have to go back and look. I, well, I've, uh, Mashton is asking if there were ashes. Um, I oh. don't remember seeing the remains of what seemed like other people or anything. It was just the Brahmin, I believe. Um, yeah. So. I'm not sure who Ringo was traveling with, if anyone, which also seems dumb. Um, please yeah. take people with you if you're going with well, yeah, your I mean, ramen. Yeah, no, usually they have like a security person at least with them or something, but yeah. Yeah, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Freaking Ringo. <laughs> Freaking Ringo. So let's talk about the other side of the situation. Um, the leader of the Powder Gangers is Joe Cobb. And Joe Cobb uh has quite the history when it comes to gangs and crime um he's been in some other gangs i think other than the powder gangers but i don't know any details about those but i do know that he was previously incarcerated for robbery arson and murder and was thrown in the ncr correctional facility Mm -hmm. where when the prison break happened he skedaddle skadoodled and that's when he went and attempted to mug ringo i wonder what order those things happened in robbery arson and murder did he like rob somebody and then try to burn their place down and then they killed them accidentally or did he murder them take their stuff and then leave the burner on the stove like leave the burner on like oh no which i don't know anyway so okay (laughs) Go on. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so I mean, oh, well, about that, I would assume uh, <laughs> probably he's been doing all three of those things a lot. <laughs> maybe, maybe, <laughs> multiple times. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> this is a, uh, a, a a big gang man. What the, a gang big shirt. gang man? <laughs> mob boss <laughs> not a mob boss <laughs> hey you stop fighting back at us i'm a big gang man and i have explosives but that is his energy <laughs> <laughs> Joe Cobb. yeah uh oh, the lady's doing her uh regular blipping out and coming back thing um that's his energy. Hello, hello. I don't remember his energy being like that, but okay. I'll go with you on that. His, I mean, he well just think about him. This man's he went up to Ringo uh-huh. and his his caravan and he was like I'm gonna go after this dude and just assume nothing will happen and then get mad when he fights back and then try to get revenge on him like how like why is he so invested in ringo you know it's so silly Mm -hmm. you (laughs) sir i will get revenge on you (laughs) with my boomsticks 
Boomsticks? Yeah, no, dynamite. That's, dynamite. That's uh, other dude. He's a powder that's ganger. Easy Pete. He's got yeah, his dynamite. Yeah, but the, but the powder gangers have boomsticks too. Ah, but yeah, so Easy he, Pete does have dynamite. You can get dynamite from him later. Secret yeah. boomsticks. Yes. Buried under the ground. Yeah, he's not. Yeah, <laughs> these are not secret boomsticks. These are unsecret boomsticks. Ah. Because the powder gangers all have unsecret boomsticks. Unsecret boomsticks. Mm -hmm. Oh man. But yeah. Anyway. Joe Cobb is a, a little jerk. He uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's going around all of Good Springs asking where Ringo is, and everyone's like, oh, "We don't know that dude. <laughs> like, yeah. Why would we tell you anything?" And he's like, "I'm gonna burn your whole city down." Like, it's just a dude. I yeah. don't. I don't understand. Yeah, he's he's pretty <laughs> like, pissed off at everybody. Fish to fry? Yeah. Well, here's the thing: is that like he, he's he's not living there. He's just kind of visiting and threatening everybody, and that's the situation you yeah. come into right at the beginning. And of course, right. Ringo's hiding in the gas station, and you go through all the quest line stuff. Um, but yeah, but yeah, Joe Cobb. It's it's kind of funny. Okay, so other thoughts: Why is the leader of the Power Gangers running around doing this? Why doesn't he have somebody like go do so, this for him? Here's what I think is that it seems like he has had a lot of gang experience in the past and i assume that probably the powder gangers maybe existed right before he got locked up or or i don't think so but maybe and just mm. try to like create them now because the options really are either they've existed in the past and now he's trying to like reunite with them mm -hmm. or they didn't exist in the past he just broke out and now he's creating this gang which means he doesn't really have very much manpower yeah Right. I think they were created sure. by the prison break, but we're going to uh, we're going to talk about this probably on the next episode. Yeah, and I didn't put a whole bunch into the semantics of the powder. Games. Right. And and <laughs> yeah, and I revisited some of this stuff in the game and I and I'd already started researching some of this stuff for next week, but I don't remember the the origin of it or if the origin is clearly articulated anywhere. Um, yeah, we're going to have to cover that next week, but we'll, we'll do some investigative reporting, friends, and we'll come back and let you know next week's episode, Powder Gangers, Fallout New Vegas. So that's it, huh? <laughs> that's it. That's it. That's it. All right. Well, cool. This is fun. Um, <laughs> I don't know why I just yeah. said that, uh, but you, Good Springs, it's, it, you know, it's the first place you visit. And so there are a number of other places that you visit. We'll probably cover Powder Gangers next week, and then we'll go from there. Maybe we'll talk about the NCR locations, kind of move through New Vegas. I think that's probably a good way to handle this is to just kind of move through. If you're interested in joining me while I play through some of New Vegas with Gorp, who I mentioned earlier, then uh, come hang out with me on stream sometimes during the day or the evenings. And uh, yeah, Novak would be fun. Yeah, there's a bunch of uh, stuff in there. Ringo, uh, I don't, there's not a whole lot else to go with Ringo, but we can talk a little bit more about that. Um, <clears throat> my name's Ringo and I play the drums. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you got going on, Laney? What do you What do you have to share before we head out? Well... I recently got my hands on a copy of New Vegas. <laughs> so, <laughs> I might, I, I might, uh, I wonder who gave you that. that um, also, isn't it like 10 bucks on Steam right now or something? Uh, yeah, there's a big or Bethesda like, sale. I feel like there's been yeah. a big Bethesda sale every other week since like Christmas, but, um, yeah, there's, so that's my, that's my PSA. Uh, go buy New Vegas and play it. <laughs> yeah. If you haven't yet, it's 10 bucks. 10 bucks. Um, it doesn't run great on Windows 10 as I've run into. Um, it, uh, it, so the first time I played it, we're in fine. The second time I played it, it would crash every time I tried to load my save and I have, I'm running with no mods because last time I tried playing new Vegas on stream, I modded it up and I was like, it's going to look amazing. And it did. And then it just wouldn't run anymore. So I was like, okay, I'll just do no, uh, unmodded, just run it, you know, and, uh, didn't, didn't work. And then I loaded it. I did some detection detective work i've got a board with string you know and put my laptop <laughs> up there and tried to just i downloaded it last night for my laptop which i can play games on and it didn't work it had the same exact problem even though i had not run it on there yet at all so me. so then i downloaded the uh nvac mod which uh makes it not crash and then it worked on the laptop for about i don't know 45 minutes until it ran out of memory weird so uh use that mod it should run okay but autosave 
and like quick save a lot. F5, 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 F5. Every time you do anything, F5. Um, cause it might just crash for you. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then I looked into like, okay, could I play it on the PS4 slash PS5, but it was a PS3 game. So probably not unless you have like PS now. So I don't know. I'm, s- I'm still trying to, trying to get through this stuff, trying to make it actually work. So, so there you go. Oh, speaking of that, speaking of PlayStation, um, I guess another video game, a uh, little PSA, I guess, is if you guys have a PS3 or if any of you are still playing on like a PSP or PS Vita, <laughs> um, those stores are closing and you can no longer mm. uh, get games downloaded from there or update games. And so if you do have one of those consoles and you have games that you would like to continue playing that you do not currently have downloaded from the store, go download them. <laughs> go get them. Stock them up. Be able- back on your console later which is very sad but eh, time moves on yeah, yeah yeah and then eventually they reissue oh, them and the answers. Stuff. the answers is closing what's closing oh, who answers gone forever oh it, you know it's about time like <laughs> seven years ago they were like we're gonna close this site and then they just stopped updating it and stuff um <laughs> ask questions on the internet but right well yeah. At gyms there, and well, of course, people are archiving them. So right. I think all all the fun questions uh-huh. you should be able to access through like the web archive and like mm-hmm. the Wayback Machine. Or whatever. Yeah, but now we just have to go to Cora. So ask all your weird questions on Cora oh, okay. from well, now on. Just go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, that's what we got going on lately, guys. Um, come hang out with us in in the future. Or more fun stuff. Uh, pregnant. Yeah, that's one of the best ones. How? How? All yeah. the preg- All the misspellings of pregnant. Um, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's good stuff. Uh, so yeah, thanks for thanks for hanging out, everybody. We'll see you next time. We'll talk about some powder gangers and some explodey sticks. Laney, see you later. Chat. Thanks for being here. And until next time, uh, run your bar like a badass and keep a shotgun behind the the, the counter because. You never know when a great con is going to come in. See you guys later. Bye. To plug into everything else we're doing, check out robotsradio.net. Also, look up the Robots Radio YouTube for videos about Fallout and other things. And check us out on Twitter, twitter.com slash robotsradio. You've been listening to a Robots Radio podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net.